Hey everyone. My hey, name hey. My name's Gabe. Uh, I'm definitely a maker and um, sort of obsessed sometimes. Anyway, uh, I came to Gainesville in 2011 for school. Um, and then in 2013, my research at school brought me to East Tennessee, uh, up in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, which is about 30 minutes from Knoxville, Tennessee. And so I lived in Knoxville, and um, uh, when I started grad school, I didn't, have, I didn't have any furniture, and I didn't want to spend money on furniture, so I started building my own furniture. And um, so I, I kept doing woodworking uh, along the way, and when I moved to Tennessee, um, I got really into it. Um, I'll go into that a little bit more later, but um, in about 2000... Uh, 15 or 2000, late 2014, I found Knox Makers, which is a uh, um, uh, maker group or hack space in Knoxville. Um, and uh, just to tell you, I, so when I, I came, when I moved back down to Gainesville this January, um, I came down here to meet some of these people, some of you all, and then um, some of you asked if I could make a presentation about Knox Makers. So, uh, seven months later, I'm here making this presentation. Um, so, um, so just to go into what Knox Maker has started, um, Knox Maker started at a bar in downtown Knoxville um, in 2011, and I think it was about seven or eight of these people that wanted to have a maker space came together, put in their own money, and rented this. Um, thousand square foot space. Um, it wasn't actually in Knoxville, it was in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Um, but it was a very small space. As you can see, there's a door, you walk in, and then it's filled with stuff. And then this is looking in from the door, it is filled with stuff. And we have like, we were growing. Um, well, I, I, I didn't join until 2014, but there's like a boat hanging off of here. That was one of the group builds. Um, there's a screen over here that everyone's looking at, but there's not a lot of space, right? Um, so uh, in 2016, uh, we moved to a much bigger space, which I have many more pictures of. Um, and we partnered with this, uh, this uh, nonprofit called ETEC, uh, East Tennessee um, Technology something, I don't remember. But they repair old medical equipment and um, give them out to people that need them. Uh, and so we sort of got involved with them doing their projects too when we moved to their space. Um, and uh, this is one of the members, Seth. He pretty much collects everything that he can, he can get, get his hands on. And um, there's a lot of people I'm going, to, I'm going to be introducing. And this is just one of the members that, you know, he has a big capacitor in his hand. And anyway, all right, next. Okay, so then we move to um, this new space, which is, uh, has two bays. The first bay was 3,000 square feet, which is a big upgrade. Um, this is uh, our first uh, 3D printing machine. This was a group build. Um, uh, this is our, um, I still say our, even I don't belong to them anymore, because it was such like a family up there uh, to me. Um, but there was, this is like the electronic stations, uh, one of the radio shacks uh, closed down, so we bought their drawers. Um, um, and this is a view of like the whole first bay. Um, you walk in, there are these tall work tables, there's a vacuum chamber. Um, and then uh, usually, and then back here there's, there's sewing back here and, and leather working. Um, and I'll show you some, some more of that later. Uh, these racks, this is looking down those racks. Um, there was, like, uh, there was like free stuff that people didn't want to throw away, but somebody else could use. And this side's all member storage. Um, I saw you guys had some member storage here too, so that's, that's pretty good. Um, and then back, back in this picture, beyond these shelves is our classroom, um, which is a really good size. Um, and we have a class every Tuesday, and it usually gets filled up. Um, and, uh, and you can see there's two screens and, you know, we have good classes there. Um, 
a class every Tuesday. So how do you arrange for a new class on, on that vigorous of a schedule? Um, what do you mean by arrange for a new like, class? So do you have like the same class every Tuesday? Or do you have uh, somebody else that you manage to convince to do a class every week? So it used to be really hard to get people to uh, do a class, because we're all volunteering. Um, but as the, the Knox makers became more, more, more well known in Knoxville, there was like, there were like artists and, and other people from uh, the National Lab at Oak Ridge um, that would come down and volunteer and do classes. So now there's like a waiting list. It used to be like, you know, we have to figure out something to do every Tuesday, but yeah. So it's built up over the last, you know, eight months. Um, it picked up a lot. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's weird how this, when I put it on there, it was like flipped the other, anyway. Um, this is our uh, woodworking area in our second bay. Um, it's 4,000 square feet. There's a woodworking area, and we spent a lot of hours building these ducks. Um, yeah, it took a really long time. Uh, I, I helped with almost everything in the woodworking area because I, I'm a woodworker. Um, back here is uh, large, large project storage um, that you can rent out as a member. Um, and it's really inexpensive. It's about, I think, uh, one of these uh, six by six spaces um, are, I think, 10 or $12 a, a week or a month. I don't remember. Um, but when I, was, when, I, when I left, not many people were using them, but um, it was kind of an experimental thing, what these large. Uh, so I was a student, and I was paying 20 a month. And um, if you're a senior to a certain level, like a certain age, uh, it was also 20 or $25. And everyone else was $50. Um, but there was also family um, member memberships, too. So you could like get your spouses and your kids. Um, and we very we defined family very, very loosely. So you didn't have you didn't have to be you know, married and stuff. Um, so yeah, so th those those were the fees we had. Um, um, yeah, so there was large projects, woodworking, um, the the saw stop that we had was donated. Everything was donated. I, I can just say that right now. Like we didn't um, Either a member bought it and then donated it, um, or some other entity donated it to us. Um, and then back there is metalworking. Um, there's welding, plasma cutting, uh, well, electro welding. Um, and when I left, they were still building the vent ventilation system. Um, OK. So I spent a lot of time in this room. Is that, it looks like it's air conditioned as well. Yes, well, this is a dust collector. Okay. This is like a large area dust, co dust collector. Um, and then each of the tool has its own dust collection as well. Um, yeah, so we kind of, we had the two bays. There was a big concrete wall or cinder block wall in between. So we put all the loud stuff on one side and then the like sewing and leather working and uh, electronics on the other side. Uh, so talking about the AC, um, we put a lot of work in this space. Like there was like mold and mildew on the walls. We cleaned everything, like all the walls, and we painted the walls. We wired the electrical ourselves. Um, I learned how to bend conduit, uh, which is like not my field, but somebody there, one of the members, the deaf for a living, and he taught us how to do it. Um, and uh, putting in the AC was like a pivot, like a pivoting point, because like people wanted to come after that. Before that, it was just like too hot and muggy um, to be in the classroom at all. Um, so we had like, we bought these uh, used AC units or auctioned AC units or something. Um, and we, uh, these are all members. Um, we all, we all, this is one of the founding members. Um, he's no longer there, but there were only two left when I was there. Um, and you'll see the other one later. Yeah, so this is us putting that thing up. Um, once we moved to a new space, we grew in numbers really fast. Uh, we had, I think, 35 members. And then within three or four months, it went up to 60-something. 
and then I don't know how much I don't know how many members there are now, um, but now this is this is like right after I left. And I was really sad. I wasn't there to see it. Um, they had their grand opening, um, and the mayor of Knoxville came, and they they welded this metal ribbon that the mayor took the plasma cutter to cut at the grand opening, which was uh, great. And then she got scanned. Um, uh, 3D scanned, and then we printed her, or they printed her. Um, uh, this, was, this wasn't done at Knox Makers. This was like sent out to Shapeways, I think, um, to get printed. Anyway, so that was a big thing that happened um, right after I left. Um, uh, so we have these like major areas in Knox Makers, and um, they're pretty much like by skills, right? There's like woodworking, like I mentioned. Um, so sewing was, was uh, one of the areas. And for each of these areas, there, we have a SAR or a, a SARINA. And so uh, Rhea was one of the SARINAs. Uh, she um, is a seamstress, tailor, professionally. Um, she makes uh, br bridal dresses. So I learned how to sew from her, which was great. And she just like taught us, and like I learned how to use a sewing machine. She like gave me tips and stuff. And here's her teaching somebody how to use the uh, serger machine. Um, and uh, that that was a photo early on um, when we were still setting up the space. And this is Sam. Um, he was a board member and one of the founding members. And they got married at the space at the at Knox Makers. Um, there were uh, 3D printed ties people wore, and no laser cut ties. Sorry. Um, anyway, they got married uh, also right after I left. Um, so this is one of the photos that they sent me. Okay, um, uh, another area was welding. Uh, we have Greg here. He is a local, well, up in Knoxville, local um, uh, metal artist, scrap metal artist, and uh, um, uh, his his studio is a scrap scrap a scrap a latchin, um, metal arts and so he teaches all the welding courses and this is like some of the work that he's done um, this his booth at, at some festival um, but so yeah he, he's really good at welding he did welding for a living for like a decade or two I don't remember but um, I learned how to electrical weld from him um, I'm showing you a lot of people because it's like you know it's it's more I mean I'm sure it's, it's like that here too it's all about the people and, what you can learn from them. Um, uh, so leatherworking is a big thing over there um, because we have someone, uh, RJ Froster. Um, he's really into leatherworking and reenactment. Um, so he, there, he's he's one of the members of the Titanic, and uh, he made all these pieces. Like, you know, he did a lot of research and he's like really inspects leather pieces. And then he got help from um, other members to 3D print parts that uh, would go on these. Like he, he has, he, he's the radio operator on the Titanic here, and like these wheels that turn on his on his. So he learned how to how to program an Adorno, and uh, he learned how to 3D print um, so that he could complete this project. Um, but he also teaches us how to do all this. So it's one of the people that teach cl classes. Um, Okay, next. Uh, so this is Doug. Uh, he was and still is the president um, and also one of the founding members um, in Knox Makers. Uh, he, he's, a he's a mechanical engineer, so he's teaching a class on um, force vectors here. Um, but he's also the woodworking czar. Um, and he's, he's done a bit of woodworking. Um, this is John Dale. Um, he is working on our group build laser cutter, um, and he's also our, he's a board member, I don't know what his role is, but he does like everything. Um, and he, take, he takes care of, of our, all our IT stuff, and uh, he keeps our chat server running, which is like the most important thing, because we talk a lot on, on our chat server. Um, he, uh, yeah, he does a lot of stuff with laser cutting. Um, just to show some of the group builds that we've done. Uh, uh, we made the sign when we, when we moved in to this new space. Um, this is, uh, uh, we were doing some 
We're doing, there was a Maker Palooza um, at one of the community colleges, and we wanted to show people how a stepper motor work. So we, we built this thing as a demo. Um, but we had a really hard time winding these coils on a lathe. So we, we tried to, we tried to like, we had like two people holding the wire and then and like somebody like operating the lathe at like a really low setting and like moving the wire back and forth. So a few weeks later, after failing at this, uh, somebody printed these parts and made a, a coil winder, like a large scale, very slow, but it worked. Um, so we did this demo um, showing people how stepper motor works. Um, this is just a photo of this thing before it was built. Yeah. Um, it was like enamel coated copper. Wire. Sorry? Standard yeah, wire. yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. There might have been an easier way or a more practical way, but this guy really liked doing, likes doing this stuff. So, um, uh, one of the things I mentioned earlier was that we partnered with this nonprofit um, that repairs medical equipment. Um, one of the projects they do uh, in the winter time is Toy Tech, where uh, they would take in toys and modify them so that kids with disabilities <coughs> could also play with them. Um, that couldn't reach the toy when they're on the table. They can like only hit it with an arm pad or something. Um, so that's that's one of the core things in Knox Makers is Toy Tech. Like in the winter, we get a lot of people in and modify these toys, wire up stuff, just like simple soldering and sewing. Um, so that, that's one of the things we do as a group. Um, uh, every Tuesday, this is another one of my favorite things, every Tuesday um, we do a, so, a show and share, so anybody can bring stuff every Tuesday to show. Um, and recently they started live streaming this on Facebook, so you can watch their show and share if you want, and their class. Um, this is Jerry, she lives about two hours away from Knoxville. She drives over about once a month. Um, she, uh, she, she weaves these vests um, on a mechanical loom and she just started working in conductive threads into her loom. And like, I don't know, I think it's pretty cool. Like, it's just really, it's, it's like an old machine, right? Like the first computer, some people say, uh, program, or first program. But then now she's like putting conductive thread into her, the clothes that she's making. Um, and there, there's me. Um, I do hand tool woodworking or traditional woodworking. Uh, joinery is my thing. I love making joints. I don't know why. Um, and this is a veneer press that I made. Um, you know, just showing people like clamps. Um, and again, there, there's more people and me. So here's like a really late night and we were all kind of like building the space out and I've gone kind of crazy. There's this photo of me. Um, here's me learning from this uh, um, Art who's a 40 year furniture, custom furniture maker teaching me how to use a table saw. I was so scared of the table saw. Um, and I'm really glad that he was there to teach me and like I would have never used a table saw if it wasn't for him. Um, and then here's me uh, teaching so now it's how to sharpen a tool. Um, and that's it. I hope you guys have a good idea of Knox Makers. <laughs> any, any other questions? Yeah. So it sounds, you mentioned uh, czars and czarinas. This sounds like area managers. Yes, they're area managers. Um, so it sounds as if, I mean, if, I'm curious about the, how, what your governance structure is like in order to maintain all of that. Um, yeah. Um, what does it look like? Is there a board? Or there a yes. Okay. So there's a board. Um, I don't remember what all the roles are. Um, there's president, vice president, um, like, like your, your regular stuff, treasurer and stuff. And there's also a creative director. Um, and a few other roles. But then the czars and tsarinas are separate from that, where they, yeah. Are they paid or volunteer? They're all volunteers. All volunteers. Yep. Mm -hmm. at, at least 
I, I, up until even this point, I, there are no, no one that's paid. So you were first. Was, um, for all that, the, the, the amount of space and equipment you have, how many members does it take to, to be able to afford all that? Um, I know some of, the, some of the members have put a good amount of their own money into it in the beginning. Um, and they also saved up money in the old space. They had, they had been saving money for this move for a very long time. Um, we have a really good deal from eTech, um, okay. the technology company, um, as far as renting that space out. And we have a really good relationship with them too. Um, so that helps, like we make a lot of noise, right? So that like, it helps to be really good friends with them. Um, I think the cost, uh, I, I, don't, I don't remember exactly. I used to know when we first moved there, um, but when I left, uh, they were not losing money. Yeah. Do you, do you know approximately how many members there were? Um, there was at least 60, if not 90. I just don't remember if the six was flipped up or down. I don't remember in my head. Um, yeah, so, and it was growing. It was definitely growing. Um, yeah. Okay, one of you. I don't, I don't remember which one. Do you know what is used to drive the giant homemade stepping motor? Um, like power source or like... Yeah, like what kind of circuitry? Um, I don't remember, but there were four buttons. And then each button did something different. Yeah. 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 So you've got a lot of dangerous equipment there. Who owns that stuff? Does the, or does the hacker space itself, or the maker space itself, own it? Is it owned by, you know, how is it? How is safety and, and insurance and all that, uh, you know, li uh, liability handled? Um, I don't know exactly if there is insurance. Um, I know there is a really big waiver. Um, and ownership of, of equipment is still, like the big equipment, like, uh, like the saw stop, is technically still owned by the, the person that bought it, um, and it's on permanent loan to Knox Makers. Um, but I, I don't know the full detail of that, but I can definitely find out for you. One last question. Um, yeah. To what extent do you guys did you guys look at what other people were doing, what other hackerspaces were doing, and try to distill best practices? We, yeah, um, we did do that a lot, um, especially before moving. Um, the president uh, went out to a few different conferences, um, especially the one, uh, the, the, one, the one at the White House, and uh, I forget what it's called. Um, but. Uh, we looked at Nashville and uh, Chattanooga and Memphis. Um, so when the time came, we just kind of went for it. I, I don't think we like learned too much from other groups, even though we explored it. Every every space was different, you know. So. Why did you bring it up? Are we, are we running out of time? I feel yeah. like we are. But, uh, yeah. No, but go ahead. You want to hone in on best practices. I think there's got to be some convergence going on. People that are successful with maker spaces, there must be some set of practices that are following that get them there. Yeah, I mean, I. Yeah, I mean, I, I can I can definitely find out more in the future. Did you, you have one, one more question? Yeah. What was your favorite project? What was my favorite project? Like group project or? Um, my favorite project, um, like okay, uh, I made three hand saws um, while I was there um, from scratch. I bought the steel. I bought hardened steel and I bought some copper bar and. Uh, I'll, I'll well, I can't bring him because I left him at my parents' place. Anyway, um, I have pictures of them. I'll, maybe I'll show you guys. Um, but I made some hand saws. Um, they were like, I would never go through all that trouble and make them again. But now I, now I have them. They're joinery saws, so they're very accurate, um, very nimble saws. And so I use, I use them all the time. Do members have 24 hour access? How do you control? Yes, 24 hour access. Uh, uh, we have. We have brass keys and um, soon to be upgraded. I think they already have, but I'm not sure. Um, there's keys and 
uh, dangerous equipment you have to swipe to use. Um, but they were still setting that up. Yeah, they were still setting up when I, when I left. Um, but so it is 24 hour access. Control? Is it just like a swipe and that's, that turns on the plug or what? That's the idea, yeah. yeah. Um, and you have to go through the. So besides the Tuesday classes, there are also individual class, not individual, but small group classes where you get certified to use the table saw or the plasma cutter and stuff, things like that. Cool. I can definitely tell you guys more and find out more if you guys want to. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah cool. Okay. Thank you.